Um, well, first of all, good morning, everyone, or should I say guten morgen? Uh, that's the only word that I've learned in the last five minutes. So uh, I apologize for not speaking actually native German or, and more important for not being here and per- being there in person because I would like to. But unfortunately, I couldn't. So, uh, but I'm I'm going to try to make the most of this presentation, so you feel that uh, all the information and all the the knowledge that I would like to share with you will get will get there in place. So, first of all, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Ricardo Ferreira, and I work as AWS as a developer advocate. So, um, uh, I specialize in my career in lots of different things throughout my my entire career, but most recently. I've been uh, working with observability technology, more specifically, technology that allows you to do both distributed tracing and uh, programmable metrics. So uh, when I when I was thinking about what submission to send for Berlin, Berlin Buzzwords, I was I was willing to talk about something related to Open Telemetry, which is a framework and SDK that I love, I like a lot. And you, if you haven't never used it, I'll encourage you to start using it because it's amazing. You're going to see today uh, alive, but the the aspect that I actually like it to cover here today is was all right. Let's try to make something different for what we what I have have seen out there related to presentations whose team is open telemetry. So I would like to be as hands as hands on as possible, right? Because here is the thing that I've noticed, right? And this open telemetry community and open telemetry observability work. There's a lot of good content out there. Extremely good content, extremely good presenters, but very few of them focus on uh, the. All right, how do I do it? I mean, I, I, I understood, I got it. Like the SDK allows you to create your own metrics, and you can send those metrics to a compatible observability backend, and it's all good. But how do I do it? Right. So the focus of the presentation today is going to be us building from scratch, well, almost from scratch. There's, there will be a little bit of code already written, uh, specifically a microservice written in Java that is on this repository over here, right? So if you go there, clone, uh, you will be available for you to play with. Actually, the whole uh, demo that I'm going to be using, constructing today is already built. If uh, I'm going to be using right now a branch that is incomplete on purpose because I will complete it with you all together right now, right? But if you go to the main branch, the whole code will be there. Uh, it's also available in Docker Compose. Um, so you can simply Docker Compose up. Everything will be spun up for you and it, you can simply play with the code, right? So, uh, but today I would like to show you the actual guts. Like one of the things that I've noticed in uh, working with Open Telemetry is that it, it is a very extensible and powerful framework. But like I said, it's a framework. What, 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 what does a framework means for you? What, what does a framework means for everybody? It means that it is just the foundation for you to build something on top, right? So what are those moving parts that you have to build? What are the moving parts that the framework provides to you out of the box? More importantly, what is actually your responsibility and what is the responsibility of the framework? So those are the concerns that I would try to address here today, right? So... Uh, there will be no slides, right? This is actually the only slide that I brought to you uh, other than the first one to present myself. So what I'm actually going to do, right, is jump straight to the coding part, right? So uh, I would like to show you what I have here right now so we can actually, um, actually, there's a lot of windows here. So we can start like uh, understanding what's going to be built. So right now, right now, what I have here is that repository that I've, I've shown you before, right? I'm going to share it with you later if you want the link, right? Uh, but I'm using this specific branch called BBuzz, right? Which is the Twitter handle for the, the Berlin Buzzword um, uh, conference. So in this repository, in this version of this branch, there is only a microservice written in Java that is, is built on Spring Boot, right? So for those of you that are familiar with Spring Boot, it's plain old Spring Boot. And It has been already instrumented to produce traces, right? Traces, right? Which has nothing to do with the theme of this presentation, which is metrics. So bear with me, all right? So uh, I'm going to show you right now what we have. Uh, After after this, I I can walk you through the code. But uh, what I'm going to do right now is to do a simple invocation. Um, 
Yeah, so there's no traces. I'm going to do a simple invocation on the endpoint, which is localhost 8080 port and slash hello. And <laughs> go figure, hello world, yeah, the famous hello world of, of every single demo, right? And then if we click a run query here, uh, in a second, it will show up, I promise. All right, here we go. So we should see a trace here that represents the complete execution of that invocation, right? So uh, nothing fancy. If we see the uh, the segments or the timeline here, you're basically going to see that the, the main trace or hello app, which is the actual service that I've created in Spring Boot, uh, has some two child spans. Uh, one is called build response, right? And the second one is called my span, right? So this build, both of them, build response and my span, they have been programmatically created. What, what I mean by programmatically is that uh, with OpenTelemetry specifically for Java, you can have auto instrumentation, which is you can use the agent that is compatible with the, uh, the microservice and you sim simply can run your code with that agent. And most of the libraries and frameworks from Java that are compatible and supported with that agent will be instrumented automatically. So this is auto instrumentation. But there is also the manual instrumentation. What is manual? It's just literally like a, you can hard code what traces or spans you would like to sh you would like to show up in your observability backend, right? Um, so the build response and the my spans, like I said, has been created like um, programmatically. Let me show you real quick how I created this. So the entry point of this microservice is this method here called hello, right? So you can you can tell because. This is the URI that I uh, associate with the microservice API, right? So after this uh, entry point here, there's this call to this method called build response, right? As you can see here. And uh, I don't want this right now. Uh, so this build response has this annotation called with span. So that's why it's automatically kind of a rapid during the invocation and it produces a span, right? But the second one is even more interesting because I have used this tracer that I've retrieved here from the uh, programmatic API and I've, I've intentionally created a child span, right? And within this span, I've made some invocations to the response object and I ended the span here. So that's why you could see here on the observability backend, uh, where's the browser here? Observability backend, the build response, which was created with the annotation, and the my span, which was created with the actual SDK of OpenTelemetry. So this is what we have right now. There are no metrics whatsoever being produced or transmitted to the observability backend, which is in this case, I'm using CloudWatch and X-Ray from AWS. But Bear with me that you can literally use anything you want. By the way, uh, if you go to the actual uh, code that I'm going to share with you later, if you simply Docker compose up, there will be no AWS there. Basically, locally, I call this the local uh, execution, uh, is going to spin up for you a Prometheus, where the matrix will be stored. It's going to spin up for you a Grafana temple, which is an open source implementation for disruptive tracing. And all the metrics and traces could be visualizing using Grafana. So, uh, this is to prove the power of uh, uh, open telemetry really allows you with the same code to actually just remove one backend and plug another without changing anything. So, so this is one of the things that I like the most about open telemetry. As, as my background includes some Java development, Java E development, I remember the days where Java EE had that promise as well. Like, uh, all right, you can write the code once and you can use as many applications, as many application services, as different application services you wanted. So that's the same promise, right? It's not that Java E didn't, uh, didn't fulfill that promise. I think it did. But what I'm trying to say is that open telemetry also delivers the same promise, right? So, okay. This is an overview about what we have right now. So uh, I think we are in the in a good shape for in terms of understand what's going on and understand what's going to happen, right? So what I'm going to do right now is to uh, effectively, um, besides like refocus my camera, what I'm going to do right now is to start the coding part or changing the pieces of the code that we start producing metrics, right? So in this in this uh, presentation we are going to create two metrics, right? One is what we call in the open telemetry board, a synchronous metric, 
or a monotonic matrix? What, what, it, what is a synchronous matrix? Is a, is a matrix whose value or whose mutations needs to hap happen synchronously, right? Or within with the code, right? It means that uh, in, in a Java word, a given thread or a given uh, like unit of execution, because you know that there's Project Loon coming out very recently, so it doesn't necessarily have to be a thread or a virtual thread in a JVM. So whatever unit of execution is effectively executing in your JVM, that's where the metric will be mutated. So what's called synchronous metric. But there's another way for you to actually create metrics in an open tournament, which is uh, I like it the most, which is the asynchronous one, right? So what is an asynchronous metric? It's a matrix where you give to the metric observer, right, the code that is going to be used for actually collect and calculate and mutate the metric. And the actual code would be periodically like, uh, let's use the word poked to start up execute and mutate the metric, and then it stops. So it kind of happens in the background. So because it's asynchronous, it doesn't uh, interfere with the execution of your own code. So uh, this is a way for the open telemetry community to solve the, 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 the famous problem that most observability solutions and uh, monitoring solutions out there have, which is, oh, yeah, no, because I'm using this agent here from this observability vendor XYZ, it's kind of slowing down my application because as they collect metrics, it compute with the resources, CPU, memory, network for that is dedicated to the application. So a synchronous metrics is a way for you to solve that problem, right? So, but I'm going to show you both. Right? So you can have all the equipment that you need for, all right, there will be situations where synchronous metrics will solve your needs, and there will be uh, situations where asynchronous metrics will be your thing. So let's start with the basics, right? which is regardless if you are using asynchronous or synchronous, you have to prepare your code for this. Because as I said, observability, um, open telemetry is a observability framework. Right, so it gives you an API, it gives you an SDK, but it's something that you use to build something on top of. Right, so let's start with this. What is this on top of? Right, so the first thing you gotta do. Um, I'm, I'm using this. I created a Spring Boot application using Maven. Right, um, as you can see here, and I already have some of the dependencies that is from the Open Telemetry Word, which is the uh, API. I need you need the API. You don't necessarily need the ex the extension annotations. I've just included this one here because of the at with span annotation that I've used it. Otherwise, you wouldn't need it. Uh, and obviously, I have the dependence here for uh, programmatically create traces. So I have the trace API here. So because we're going to build metrics, you're going to also need the metric API. So that's the first dependency that you need to include in your code, right? So it's called Matrix API. Uh, can I build your file? Yes, go ahead and build, man. You should have been doing this already, but anyway. <laughs> so I, I'm actually going to stop the execution of my microservice here. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you this. So, uh, so how works the plumbing of this microservice? So when I execute the collector, I'm sorry, the, the microservice, you're gonna see that I have only tracing enable and the endpoint where the trace is going to be sent is going to be for this uh, service running on the port 5555, which is the open telemetry collector, right? So think of the collector as the sidecar agent that can run side by side with your application as a sidecar, if you are working with service mesh or Kubernetes uh, technologies, or it can be simply an agent that is running locally or co-located with your applications where the application is preferably clo uh, uh, network-wise close together, right? And then the role of the collector is to receive metrics and traces, buffer them, process them, uh, perhaps even mutate them if you want it. Think about the collector as an enterprise service bus, as a very small enterprise service bus that you can use to expose endpoints, receive, you do intermediate processing, and there will be a backend where the collector will send the producer data, which is the, in this case, the, the backend is going to be the observability backends, right? Anywho, uh, so that's what I'm doing here. I am basically uh, executing using the Java uh, Open Telemetry agent. I am running my code, but 
I'm exporting those environment variables to point to the collector. So the collector is this gentleman using running on this uh, window over here. So here's where I, I'm running the microservice. So you can see the flow that I'm going to be using. So I just stop at the microservice, right? Because I'm going to change the code. I've just included the uh, metrics API. And what I'm going to do right now is to, all right, what do I have to do in my code to start creating metrics? So first you need a meter, all right? So what is a meter? I'm going to make an analogy. Uh, here, as you can see, I created this span for traces from a tracer, right? So the tracer I retrieved here. I invoke global open telemetry, which is a singleton object. If you have a JVM alter instrumented with the agent, you can simply retrieve as many tracers as you want it and just give them a unique name, right? So what I'm going to do is something similar to create not a, um, a tracer, but I'm going to create a meter. So actually I kind of like the name meter. So, so the meter is part of the SDK, that dependency that I've created, and it is available on this package here, Open Telemetry API Matrix. So this is what you have to do, right? Uh, I also like, this is kind of a, my practice to associate it meter with a version of the API, because as you may know, the Open Telemetry project is evolving fast, so there's a lot of different versions. So one thing you can do, can and should do, is to always, every time you create a metric or a tracer, sorry, a meter or a tracer, you give them uh, the specific version of it. So in this case, I am injecting the actual version for my build on Maven here on this variable, and I'm reusing this on uh, while I'm creating the meter. Let me see if I can. Um, yeah, yeah, I can. All right, so kind of an indentation of the code, a little bit to look at nicer. So now that I have a meter, all right, I can start actually creating as many metrics I wanted. And from this meter, you can create both synchronous and asynchronous metrics. So we're going to start like creating one uh, synchronous metric first. So um, I'm going to use, so in this case, we're going to create a counter. So every time the microservice is invoked, the counter will count, right? And we are going to see the value of this counting and, uh, and the observability map backend, right? So, so we can see that is kind of an incrementing every time. Uh, if we invoke the endpoint five times, the metric value should be five, right? So that's the theory anyway. So for this, I'm going to create a Synchronous metrics has the characters you have to create a variable for this because uh, it is a stateful component. So they have to maintain their state within the JVM and within your code. So in this case, I'm going to create something that in the open telemetry API, we call a long counter. Why long? Not because it's, it takes too long to compute, but because the data type will be a long or a type of a integer that is very, very huge, right? And I'm, I'm going to call this number of executions. So this is going to be the name of this uh, variable. So like I said, it's uh, kind of a best practice for you to store as a variable member of your POJOs or Java classes because they will contain state, right? So this is important. So the life cycle of that state will be dictated by the scope of your variable. So it's kind of a brass practice to put this as an attribute member of your whatever Java class you're dealing with, all right? And then, but this, as you know, this is only the declaration of the variable. I have to build, right, that uh, variable. So what I'm actually going to do is to create a callback. Uh, I'm using Spring here, right? So let, let's leverage the, uh, the, the nice things about Spring, which is create a method that will be invoked just right after the POJO has been instantiated. And we can do this using this annotation called POS construct, right? Uh, okay. So here's where we're gonna create our matrix. Uh, okay. Need this. All right, so number of executions, which is the variable that we want to create, is gonna be created using this code here. Right, bear with me with the compiler error. I'm going to fix it in a minute. But 
just for you to know, basically what I'm doing here is to, um, oh, these windows are misbehaving today. Basically what I'm doing here is to, um, I'm going to invoke the meter. So you, when we invoke the meter, you have the option to specify what type of uh, metric you want to create. So in this case, I'm going to use a counter and Every metric has a builder pattern uh, from the SDK, so which is pretty nice. So you can simply, all right, counter builder, you give a name for it, and then it retrieves the same object. You can set the description. It retrieves the same object. You can set the unit. The unit is, all right, what, what, what this metric is about. So you can name it whatever you want as, as long as it's kind of a repeatable and uh, there's a pattern of your metrics. And then you build, right? So when you build, is going to return a long counter instance, right? So this constants here, uh, because it's kind of a best practice to externalize the name of everything, right? So I've created this interface here with constants, which I am going to set the value of it right now, so we can simply reuse in our code. Uh, where is my import? All right, so what I can do here is in my import session of the code, I can import all the constants, and then I can simply use the name and the description. So just to recap, the name of this metric will be custom.metric.number.of.exec, or number of execution. Custom metric number of execution. That's, that's gonna be the name of this metric. This is what you are going to see, not you, but whatever is looking to the observability backend, uh, this is what they are going to see for this metric, right? You, so as you can see here, you can name whenever you want as a string, right? So you can put whatever you want. Um, okay, so we have the metric. It's been created. It's functional. The only thing that is missing that we have to provide a code that's going to increment it, right? It's going to mutate the state of this metric, right? So... Uh, the best way to do this, and because it's synchronous, remember, this is a synchronous matrix. It has to be within the execution of their code. So what I'm going to do here is to uh, include, right after we check if the response is valid, I am going to include this piece of code here, which is I'm going to use the number of executions we created here, as you can see it, and we're going to invoke the method add, right? And we can add when you increment, right? Uh, just FYI, this is the type of metric, synchronous metric that you only increment. It only goes forward, right? But there is a, let me show you here real quick. If you go from the meter, there is this uh, guy here called up, da, up, down, counter builder, right? You can create uh, a counter, right? But you can send negative values as well. So it can go up and down. So if you plot this in an histogram in the observability backend, you can see the ups and downs of whatever metrics you're trying to create, right? But in our case here, we are creating something that only goes forward. So because for our case, the, you, you don't unexecute something, right? You just execute or don't execute. So it has to always go forward, right? So uh, we are going to uh, basically add one for every single execution of this endpoint. So this is everything you need to create a synchronous metric, right? For the code perspective, at least, okay? This is important. For the coding part, we're done, okay? Now, what we are going to do is to configure the microservice to send those metric, uh, what is the word? Metric collections to the collector so the collector can buffer them and send to the observability backend. So uh, let's do this on the script that I use to execute the microservice. So uh, in this script, as you can see here, we said that the tracers export is going to use this. Uh, this is a protocol called OTLP, right? There's a lot of protocols that you can use to export both traces and methods. There's OTLP, there's Kafka, there's Zipkin, there's Jaeger, there is GRPC, pure GRPC, there is HTTP, right? So there's a bunch of protocols that you can use for, this is what has to do with the transmission of it, right? The, the metrics are there, they're in a common format called OTLP protocol, right? But how do you are going to transmit them? So I've chose here to use OTLP 
and I'm going to do the same for uh, the matrix, right? Uh, but you are not required to. You can export your matrix in one protocol. You can export your traces in another protocol. It doesn't make any difference because they're now in a common uh format or schema, right? So any observability, any compatible, that's important, any compatible observability backend will be able to see it, right? So, and for since I'm using OTLP uh, for the format of the protocol, you can set the OTLP endpoint, which is in this case is going to send to the same, um, the same collector that I'm using to collect traces to send to the observability backend, right? So this is how we are doing. Um, all right, so actually, yeah, yeah, so right now I also need to send, what is the frequency in which all the metrics are going to be sent? So I'm gonna use this metric export interval and set to one second, right? Why this is important? Because the default of this uh, variable is one minute, which is in a production and real world environment is more than appropriated because you, you don't want to send the metrics every second to your observability backend for obvious reasons, right? Network and CPU and memory are scarce resources. So you don't want to kind of underutilize this just because you want to see in real time everything. In the real world, you, you won't see real time anyway, right? You're, you're, going, you're going to see like every once in a while or perhaps every five minutes. So it's more than enough to set for one minute. But in our case here, we need to see in real time because we can't wait for five minutes. We, we have a very limited time for, for this. So that's why I've set this for one second. But be, take this advice, don't set this on production environments. You're gonna overload both your application and the observability backend, right? So, and, and the network, right? Because network is not infinite. Run, rule number one of distributed systems, right? Network is not abundant. Uh, okay, so, Let's just recap. We've created a code. The code is here, Jack. Uh, the microservice is configured, the word is configured, not programmed. It's configured to send the metrics to the collector, so check, right? Now, the last part is to configure the collector to send this metrics to observability backend. And that's the interesting part. So I'm gonna open up here the, um, the configuration file of the collector, right? Again, all of this and the code that you are, you can use on GitHub is there, okay? You don't need to remember everything that I'm showing here. You can simply double check the code. I think the important part and the actual value of this presentation is me highlighting for you the moving parts, right? What I've changed or what you have to change, right? I think that's the, the knowledge that I would like to share with you, right? So, Right now, the collector is configured to expose an OTLP endpoint over the port 5555. That's why we are saying that the microservice communicates with this endpoint. This is the entry point of the collector, right? Uh, by the way, you can have many as many endpoints you want it. You can have as many collector instances as you want it, right? You don't have, you can scale out using many executions of a collector and different pods or different machines or different containers. You don't need to actually create only one. For demo, it's fine, right? Also, you don't need to actually send your traces and metrics to always the same collector. You can have a collector that only receives metrics and a collector that only receives, matrix, receives traces. So you can separate the endpoints here. There's an environment variable that, if I remember correctly, it's called OTL exporter, traces OTLP endpoint and OTL exporter matrix OTLP endpoint. So you can separate the, the, the endpoint. So you, you don't overload a given collector because perhaps maybe there's a lot of tracing, but not necessarily lots of matrix or the other way around, lots of matrix, but not necessarily lots of tracing. So you that's the type of fine tuning that you do want to do before moving to production, right? So you bear with me. So, the collector is a very straightforward configuration. So as you can see here, all, everything boils down to pipeline. So in this case, I have a, one pipeline that would treat traces where the first stage of the tracer is the receiver, is going to execute one or more processors and is going to execute one or more exporters. So as you can see here, we are receiving the traces via OTLP. We're doing some processing, batch processing, which is in this case is I'm going to batch buffer, if you will, for five seconds, 
I'm, I, my microservice is sending every one second, but the collector will receive them, buffer for five seconds, or until it reaches uh, 1024 bytes of size, and then they're going to flush to the back end. So this is a very uh, fine tuning that you can use as well to uh, handle overloading. So what I'm going to do now is to create uh, another exporter here that I am going to use to export the, all the metrics for CloudWatch. So let me just fix one thing here because YAML is very ruthless in terms of identification. So I'm going to, ex this is the exporter for CloudWatch and I'm going to set for this region, this is gonna be the log group that I'm gonna be creating and the log stream, right? I'm, you, you're gonna understand what this, this means in the end. And then I am going to create another pipeline here for metrics, not for traces, but for metrics. So my pipeline for metrics is receive via OTLP, process using the same processor for batching and then export to CloudWatch, right? So this is the only configuration necessary for you to, for the collector perspective, receive the metrics, buffer them or batch them, if you will, and then flush to the exporter. That's the beauty, right? So, oh, Ricardo, uh, so it only works to export for CloudWatch? No, you, you're going to see the open telemetry product. There's a lot of exporters available. You can use an exporter OTLP as well. So whenever your observability backend supports OTLP as inbound, you can simply, from the collector standpoint, configure it to OTLP, and there you have it. Everything you need for exporting the metrics will be there. So, uh, Or you can use specific exporters, just like I'm using here for CloudWatch. Okay, so I'm going to stop the collector. Enough talking. Let's test this beast here. So I'm going to re-execute my collector, run collector, to see if it's no error, so it means it's good. And I'm going to re-execute my microservice using that script that we've created before. So it's going to force a Maven build because it's a fresh execution of the code, and then it's going to execute the uh, code of the microservice using the agent, right? Uh, I'm not sure if you can notice, don't mind to try to read it. It's a bunch of characters being flushed out here. But what matters is that those characters are moving in the screen every five seconds, right? Not sure if you can notice this, like one, three, four, five. Now, so this is the collector buffering the metrics being co continuously collected, or regardless if they're being mutated or not, this is important, right? The collector always receives them and buffer, right? They might just resend the same values that haven't been recomputed before. And you can turn this, the collector, if you don't want, if you only want to send the collector if the matrix has been mutated. This is pretty neat if you want it. But enough talking, right? So uh, let's see how this works. So what needs to happen now, where's the window, All right? If I go to my cloud watch and go to log groups, now we need to have a log group. That's the name we've configured in the collector. And this is the log stream that was created. So right now, uh, if I filter here for custom.metric.number.of.executions, we have no like instantiations of that metric so far. There are others that come out of, out of the box from the JVM, but this one haven't occurred yet, right? So this is good because we didn't, uh, if, if you look at here for the traces, there are no executions of the microservice. So let's execute the microservice a couple times. Okay. Uh, so I've executed the microservice roughly five times. So the traces will come, yeah, five times. That sounds right. And then if we go to metrics, here's the interesting part. So we can create a metric here in CloudWatch using the hardware in the easy way. The hard way is to go to the custom namespace that I'm using here. So there will be a bunch of JVM metrics that the, uh, the, 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 the auto instrumentation from the JVM brings for you automatically. So things like a JVM heap and things like this, it's collected for you automatically. You don't have to change this. But uh, I'm going to use the easy way because 
Otherwise, I will need to browse for each one to see where the metric is. So I'm going to filter here for the metric that I'm interested. It's custom metric. So it find it for me. And this is the metric, custom.metric.number of execution. I'm going to select this to plot here on my diagram, right? Not very interesting to see, but I'm going to do some customizations here. Uh, I don't want anomaly detection. And I want this to be a gauge, right? Where the minimum value is zero and the maximum value will be, I don't know, 100? 10, I think 10 is better. And okay, display the most recent data point. And more importantly, I don't want to, to look for the average. I want to look for the sum. So all the from all that metric, I want to sum everything from the last five minutes. Okay, so CloudWatch takes some time to actually do the aggregation and the background. So in a moment, we should see the metrics coming up here. So just to recap, if I did everything correct, it's a gauge, five minutes, it's a sum, that's the gauge. Um, bu, 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 bu. I think everything is right. I think we just need to wait. Yeah. Here we go. So five executions of that matrix. So this, this is the, remember that I told you that this is a stateful component, right? So currently, your application is holding that state. And the same state has been propagated to the observability backend. So they are in sync, right? Ricardo, what happens if the collector goes down, right? So if the collector goes down, your metric in your application or microservice will be incrementing, right? Because the execution is, uh, is going on. And then your observability backend will be stuck in here. When the collector goes back online, it's going to try to sync up all those values, right? I'm not going to lie to you, just like any distributed system, it might have errors or margin for inconsistencies or that may happen. That's why when you are designing an architecture that has to do with metrics replication from your application to the observability backend, network reliability, the plumbing part has to be on par with your code, right? So in other words, don't just aim to create a very, like, uh, very, um, very elaborate code, but also the plumbing has to be like very neat, all right? So it's working, fine. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is to create a asynchronous matrix, and we're going to leverage this all this plumbing that we've just did here, because now the only thing we have to do, I'm, I stop both the collector and the microservice. Uh, now we only need to do is to create another metric, and this, this one is going to be a little simpler, but, the cool part about this one is that this is an asynchronous metric. So this metric we are going to call uh, heap memory because we're going to compute the available heap memory from the JVM, right? Which is pretty nice. And that metric will be this one. So I'm going to call the meter here within the create matrix environment. And da, 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 da. all right, so. Get runtime. Okay, so I have to import this. I think it's um, where is the import of this? It's from the Java. It's a Java link package, actually. I don't need to import everything. Okay. Yeah. So the, the cool part of this, and here's the difference of what we are doing here, right? So just like before, from the meter, I create a gauge builder. So this metric type is gonna be a gauge, right? And I've set a description, I've set the name, which is custom metric heap memory. Uh, I set the unit, which is bytes, right? I'm handling bytes here. But here's the thing, instead of invoking the build method, I think I hear some background. Okay. All right, so instead of uh, invoking the build method, I'm going to invoke the build with callback. And I'm going to give a Lambda code that will compute and record the value, the mutation, if you will, of that matrix. So that's all you need to do. You don't need to call out from any part of the code because this is going to be automatically computed. So the only thing I'm going to do now is to re-execute the collector. 
Uh, excuse me, Ricardo, we're running out of time for the question, uh, so I don't know if you have something else to show us, but uh, we, it will be time to take the question because we were supposed to finish at uh, 40. Okay, okay, all right. Uh, so let's do this. Uh, if, if anyone has any questions, you can raise it, and then I will show the metrics being uh, on the dashboard. But feel free to bring up any questions right now. Do we have maybe any question? Okay, so we have maybe just two two minutes uh, left if you want to show something. Oh, that's more than enough. <laughs> okay. So okay, so what we are going to do in this two minutes, because uh, we need to be respectful for other speakers' time and the conference time and your time specifically. So that's more important. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is the collector and the microservice are up and running as they're supposed to. And what I'm going to do is to execute the microservice a couple times so we can produce some metric. Actually, I don't need to execute this because the metric is computed uh, in the background automatically. So the memory evaluation will be there anyway, So, which is good. So this metric is okay. Uh, I'm going to go back to the browse metrics and I'm going to not search for this one, but uh, custom.metric, I should receive both. So as you can see here, there's a new metric on the neighborhood. So I'm going to not plot this one, but plot this one. And then I'm not gonna use a god because it doesn't make any sense. I'm gonna use a number. So this is the available JDM memory for that microservice, which is 73 megabytes, if you will. So that is, the, the, the cool part about this metric is that it's continuously updated. So, and it's associated to a timestamp. So maybe if you wanna create like a histogram uh, where you see the progression or the utilization of the JDM as the microservice executes, that's very easy to do here on the observability backend, right? Okay, just to wrap up, and this is everything that I, I wanted to show with you. Uh, well, first of all, thank you, the organizers, and specifically uh, the participants for being here today. I, there will be no conferences if you wouldn't be here. Uh, so thank you. And if you have any questions, like you can re hit me on uh, Twitter or uh, anyone that knows me know that I'm open book. Like, can like go simply there, ask your questions. I'll be more than glad to help you. Or you can go to the CNCF Community Observability uh, on Slack. I'm always there to like try to answer and post questions as well because I'm a user just like you. And that's it. Um, thank you and have a very rest of the conference. Thank you. Uh, but we have just one question online. If you have just one minute, uh, the question is: Is the branch you're using on the GitHub? Is the, could you repeat the question? Is the branch you're using on the GitHub? Yes, good question, and the answer is yes. The branch is called the bus. Okay, so or it's, an, it's an online question, so we are we will not have the answer from the from the um, the viewer. So thank you. Uh, it was a, such a good presentation, and uh, and I think we can all applaud our speaker. Thank you very much. You have a good one.